All right, welcome back to The Reason You're Here. Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome back to the video portion of the show called Dollar Box Reads. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, three reads, as always, pulled right out of my dollar box of comics, and this week I've got three real treats for you this week. The first one is Conan the Barbarian, number 116. The second is Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man, number 47. And the third is Nexus Legends, number one. So... Why did I pick those? I didn't have a reason. I reached into the box. I pulled them out. No reason. None at all. Anyway, um, so they're random. They're always random. And please do know that. And if you're watching on video on the YouTube channel, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so you'll get to see a bit of the art, and uh, we'll get to explore that a little differently. But if you're on the audio, I'll try to be as contextual as possible. Does that seal? How's that sound? How are you doing? Can I rub your shoulders? Anyway, um, <laughs> Conan the Barbarian number 116. Uh, is a fantastic little issue I found in the dollar bin. It's called The Crawler in the Mists. Uh, All-star cast, too. Check this out. Len Wein was the writer. Len Wein. Pfft, Len Wein. Hello. John Buscema and Neil Adams were the artists. Neil Adams. Dollar bin. Neil Adams. Right on. George Russos was the colorer. Marv Bullpen was the letterer. Well, I, don't, I don't think that was Marv's name. I think he, he was in the bullpen, and he was a guy named Marv. I bet he's probably like Marv Johnson or Marv Weinstein or something. Louise Jones was the editor. Jim Shooter was the editor-in-chief. The writer was aided and abetted by Jim D. Mateus. And, of course, you know Conan was created by Robert E. Howard. And the editors note that this story took place between Conan's 12 and 13. What is this about, Jason? Let's get to it. Conan is in the desert. He is wandering along. He's on a horse. His horse rears because the horse has a snake. Why did it have to be snakes? And the snake makes the horse rear. Conan falls his dumbass off the horse. Uh, the horse runs off, but it, when Conan's dumbass hits the sand, bam, snake bite, ah, like this on the video, ah, snake bite. Anyway, so snake bites his hand. Conan does the old wives' tail thing, cuts his hand open, sucks the poison out, <laughs> spits it out like a man, and thinks, fuck it, I'm done. But three panels later, booyah, a blackout. Wakes up, Conan is on a camel. He thinks, oh, everything's all right. This camel picked me up. No. He is actually chained to a group of Weasley merchants. One of them named is... Uh, now, I want to get this right, because I did this before, uh, but I forgot to turn on my mic. I want to say... Oh, Rasto. I almost said Rasto before. His name's Rasto. He's chained to someone named Rasto, and uh, there's two others there. And, and Rasto's like... Who's like a Rob Schneider-y, David Spade-sized character, looking a little like sort of a very skinny Vincent Price, Rob Schneider cross... Um, he says, ha ha, you're chained to me and you're not going anywhere. And he's like, fucking Conan, boom, rips him off the horse. And, uh, Rasto of course falls to the ground. And then Conan says, you're just a bunch of Weasley merchants. You're going to have to take me. So the merchants try and fail to conquer him. He beats them all up. Two of the merchants scurry off into the desert because they made their camels run off. And it's just him and Rasto who still have a camel. And, uh, Conan decides to be human and gets on his camel tells the other guy since you're chained to me you might as well ride on me to make it more efficient they ride off boop, 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 boop. so as they ride off um they're talking about you know well what's going to happen to me yada yada nothing really comes of that but they come upon a city Hana! and the city is um looks abandoned and then rasto suddenly says oh shit wait a minute i know this city we can't go in here let's not do this conan and he, conan says uh city food babes place to sleep we're going in. So he drags Rasto in there. They get in there. People are scared. There's very not very many people at all. It's very, looks like very much like a, a small Italian village-ish. And when they get to the center of the square, Conan says, look, I'm tired. Let's get some sleep. Rasto says, but wait, there's supposed to be this evil creature roaming the grounds, and it will kill us if we go to sleep. And he says, go your ass to sleep, and I will wake you up. I'm a light sleeper. Don't sweat it. Well, Conan's pooped. He's been fighting skinny barbarians and walking in the desert. He crashes, crashes. Wakes up, Rasto is being dragged off by this red um, slug-looking thing, which I will uh, is my favorite panel of the book, and I will show that to my video readers as soon as I can scroll my ass to it. And by the way, let me just do that for the video, folks, so they can see the cover of the issue that I'm talking about. Anyway, here's the red thing that I'm for the video, folks. It looks a lot like a slug kind of crossed maybe with Mark Wahlberg. Now the Mark Warburg thing is a joke. It's just a slug. And so that's my favorite panel that Adams and Buscema do together there. Anyway, so Rasto is dragged off. And as he's dragged off, the uh, creature snaps out a tentacle and snaps the tenta or the chain between Rasto and Barbarian. 
So now Conan is, uh, he gets up and rather than just, you know, sort of say, wait, fucking I'm Conan, I'm going to leave. Um, he grabs a sword and decides he's going to protect this guy because for whatever reason he, he is latched onto him. So anyway, he uh, hunts the other red thing down and when he sees it, kills it. And uh, when he kills it, he basically dumps a stone pillar onto it and that smashes it. But the problem is, is later on when Conan... Uh, goes to catch up to Rasto, he finds him along alongside another red worm, and Rasto says, wait, don't kill this one. He has something he wants to say to you, and he goes, say, and then suddenly the worm pops into Conan's mind, and, you know, you're good enough, you're smart enough, people like you, and says, look, don't, you can't kill me, and you can't kill that, and by the way, you just killed my wife, and you killed her because she couldn't talk. And Conan goes, ooh, sorry about that, uh, Anyway, I was fighting for my life, you know, and I don't even think he says I'm sorry. But anyway, so he says, well, whatever, we're safe. I'm a sorcerer, and I'm just going to return to my dimension. And he decides to take Rasto with him. But Conan's like, I don't think Rasto wants to go th with you. And Rasto's like, uh, I'm going, by," And they both disappear. Boom. But as they disappear, they, this sort of glowing gate that they're in shows up. And you, he can see this kind of nirvana in the distance. Beautiful women, children, lots of food, very Greekish architecture. And he sees Rasto come down some stairs, and Rasto is no longer a skinny Vincent Price, uh, Rob Schneider-looking character. He's more of a Benedict Cumberpatch, Arnold Schwarzenegger-looking character, more robust and virile, and all the women's are looking at him. And now Conan wants to get in there like, yo, if, if you're doing all right, I want to do all right. And the red worm transmits back to him and says, sorry, Conan, you are, what the actual quote is, there is no place for you beyond the veil so long as there is such fury in your heart and violence in your soul. So, Conan's, that's it. The door closes. Conan moves on with his life, hops on a camel, and leaves the fortress at the end. I really enjoyed this great read, a great comic book read, a great Conan read. Um, not Conan O'Brien. Um, and uh, a lot of fun to read. So, if you find that in your dollar bin, do pick that one up. Next one is Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number 47. I really enjoyed this. Um, and you can see, uh, uh, which I'm showing to the video folks, the tag on the front is, who is this new prowler? I'll say this right up front. This, my friends, is what comic book reading is all about. This is great comic booking right here. Let me tell you who's uh, the crew on this Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. By the way, the Conan, Conan was done in November of 1980. This one was done in October of 1980. I, that would make me 11 years old. Uh, this was Roger Stern was your writer. Uh, Marie Severin, who passed away in 2018, is your penciler. She was also known for doing EC comics. Uh, she was a Eisner, um, uh, Eisner Hall of Famer, uh, well-liked, and had a couple of relatives who were in the business. Bruce D., apparently he's also, he was the DJ at Studio 54 at the time, but he also did the inks and the letters. Glynis W., color, what are these screen names? I always thought you had to put full people's in. I bet they do now. Uh, Glynis W0557 screen name. Anyway, Glynis W was the colorist. Denny O'Neill, the editor, of course. Jim Shooter was the editor-in-chief. In summary, Peter Parker is at a bar. He discovers that he is, uh, the news people are saying, yo, Spidey, uh, you murdered a bitch, and you need to figure some stuff out. And Spidey's like, I didn't murder nobody. I need to go figure this out. So he's packing up his Spider-Man stuff, and as happens at the beginning of comments as a test of prowess, somebody sort of challenges him. He knocks him out webs his way over to where the crime scene is now this is my favorite panel read of the three that we have this week so spider-man webs his way over to the scene of the crime puts on his regular civilian clothes tucks his mask into his crotch um and he shows up at the scene now the panel is so there's a, a narration it says and sure enough dot 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 and peter parker says excuse me he's wearing a mock by the way and a blazer he's like like greed 80s anyway excuse me i dot 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 and then this police detective is standing in front of me goes huh who the devil are you and how did you get up in here this is a police investigation and there's another guy next to him who's sort of like a like a if david letterman were on planet of the apes with a porn mustache that's this guy and he says ah he's all right sarge that's parker isn't it he works for the globe and then the sergeant just says well if donovan says you're all right i guess it won't hurt anything you know Fuck forensics. So anyway, Parker's just sort of hangs around the crime scene, sort of listening to what they're saying and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And there's this couple who says, yep, we saw Spider-Man outside the window and he tried to break in. So we shot at him and my husband, who's a crack shot shot, 
This is the first time he ever missed in his life, amazingly. But anyway, that's what happened. And the woman who's sort of behind it, um, who I believe is uh, later named Belladonna in the book, um, she says, yep, that's what happened. So anyway, Parker says, well, I didn't murder them. I need to go. So he needs to start figuring stuff out. He figures the woman has something to do with it, can't figure it out. But he starts to pick together that he thinks this is more about the Prowler than it is him. So he decides to visit his old buddy, the Prowler, who happens to be dead asleep, pulls him out of bed and says, what have you been doing with my identity or your identity or whatever? The Prowler's like, yo, I haven't done anything in like eight months. And Parker's like, uh-huh, right, yeah, prove it. And he goes, all right, look, I haven't done anything in eight months. I tried to join the Defenders. They kicked me out, blah, 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 blah. Come on, I'll take you where all my stuff is. It's rusted. It's unused. You'll see it. So he goes to take him to wherever his storage unit or whatever open and goes to open storage unit. Notice the lock has been picked and stuff's already missed. He's like, oh, somebody's been messing with my stuff. So anyway, again, he reiterates, look, I, again, tried to join the defenders. I was in it for like a minute. Valkyrie got pissed off, kicked my ass. I was not a defender. The end. So Parker sort of buys that and moves on. But someone is playing the prowler and he doesn't know who it is. So goes through the machinations. We discover that a former uh, villain named Cat Burglar is now the prowler and was hired by the woman, Belladonna. Uh, to um, make this happen. So um, we go through some scenes talking about what, what sort of some flashbacks as to why the new Prowler exists, uh, a scene with Aunt May, uh, and then Spider-Man goes looking for the Prowler again. Finds this guy, they get into a bit of a fight, but they're both sort of uh, being led to a place where they will both be captured. And sure enough, they get into this tank or whatever, they start fighting, and then they're locked into this aluminum or this metal vault with very thick glass. And Belladonna says, um, don't waste your time, Spider-Man. I prepared this trap quite well. Not even you can break this ultra thick glass. So, you know, maybe it's like airplane window glass or, you know, whatever. And um, so at the cliffhanger is that uh, they're inside of here, the, the pseudo prowler and Spider-Man. And Belladonna turns on some gas. And the last panel is goodbye, Spider-Man. You're a challenging opponent while you lasted. And that's it for that one. This is a great comic book. This is one of those comic books that they could take and make a movie script out of it almost immediately. Little tune-ups here and there, make it a little more modern, but this is great stuff. This is really good stuff. Um, it might be a dollar comic still, but it's still a great read. It was a fun to read. I was into it five pages in, hooked immediately. Great read. Recommend picking it up. All right, so the last one is this one right here. It is Nexus Legends, number one. Now, this is a reprint of books that First Comics did on one of my favorite comic book titles ever. I've got over in my storage closet, I've got sketches by Steve Rude, I've got Nexus books, I've got Nexus DVDs. Nexus was perennial for me back in the 80s. So this is gathers up. Um, let me see if it actually says what issues it gathers up. Uh, I don't remember, but it's right toward the front. It's probably like in the teens. But anyway, um, for the video folks, there's the cover, which you can also see. But for the video folks, look at this costume. Brilliant. It's this beautiful uh, blue on a navy with the lightning bolt down the left shoulder. And uh, just, it's, it's awesome. Kudos. And uh, so I mentioned the crew to you. Mike Barron, brilliantly written here. Steve Rude, brilliantly drawn. Richard Bruning is the editor and art director. George Freeman is the colorist. It's an O-U-R, so maybe this was a British edition. Mary Pullum was the letterer. Karen Prius was the editorial assistant. Stephen Welch was the production assistant. So the basic plot of this one is that uh, Nexus has taken in these refugee floating heads who were being used by uh, a slave called, um, I think it's Clausius. But let me verify that for you. Uh, let's see. Ta -ta -da. Yeah, Clausius. Um, Clausius is this kind of... Um, uh, uh, white slave trader, for lack of a better word, and it was using these heads for their energy and their brains and things like that. Well, uh, uh, Nexus lets these heads live with him on Ilum, but the heads don't want to live there. But uh, Nexus is kind of said, well, this is where you're going to live, and they don't have access to a ship. So they have sort of a revolt. They want to get off the planet, and they hire this character named Judah Maccabee to come save them. Or I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. They, they were going to take a ship and leave, and Nexus says no. Nexus is out to dinner, runs into someone named Judah Maccabee, who is a key character, brilliant character with the mohawk and things like that. And uh, Judah Maccabee has come to this place where Nexus is eating dinner to kill this other sort of gross evil merchant. Nexus stops him and says, you know, stay your hand, do all that. And as they're walking out, he kills him. It's a fantastic scene. But anyway, they find out that Judah has also been hired by the floating heads to sort of take them away. And then Nexus finally says, look, if you want to leave, leave, whatever, just go do whatever you want to do. They kind of sort of come to an agreement 
and the floating heads agree that Judah, who they hired to do this, who also has some similar powers to Nexus, um, Nexus can summon these energy blasts uh, as a, as a, uh, through, uh, through fusion, and Judah has a similar power. And um, so they say they hired Judah to go get this guy, Clausius. Well, uh, in between, uh, Judah finds out that his father works for Nexus, and his father says, didn't I name you David? And how did you get to Judah Maccabee? And, and Judah goes, well, I fell in with some rabbis. That's a pretty funny throwaway line. Um, and the, also in this process, you discover that Nexus has been monitored by the woman he's been sort of in love and living with, but the woman who's been in love with him has given up on that post for like a year. So finally, this politician who's trying to nail Lexus or Nexus, Lexus, Nexus, is trying to nail Nexus for uh, supposedly sucking the energy out of stars with his fusion powers, comes to visit him. And so all that's happening. Meanwhile, Judah gets on a ship, flies off, comes back, and the way that Rude draws it is brilliantly. He's stepping out of the shadows of the doors, and you think they're all going to welcome back, and he's going to drag Clausius in or drag his head in or whatever, and Judah has no head. And he's got this energy, and oh, the whole thing's really bad. So they figure that all out, and they got to figure out where Judah's head is. And uh, Nexus is see him putting on his gloves. He says, I'm going to get Clausius my damn self. And that's how that comic ends. I can't say enough about the artwork in this book. This is professionally drawn comic book art. The colors are vivid and brilliant. The art is crystal clear. Pages two and three, the way that uh, Steve Rude draws Nexus is so adult and professional and beautiful. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's brilliant work. Uh, his Judah Maccabee stuff is fantastic. Um, for the people on, at, on, the, uh, on the video, here's a great splash of Judah Maccabee getting ready to rake over this guy that he sent to the restaurant that he eventually does not rake over because Nexus asked him, but then he does rake him over to kill him. So that's all fun. Uh, it's a brilliant book. I highly recommend any Nexus you can get your hands on. This is a fun one to own, but it's just... It's a, uh, it's a uh, what do they call it? It's a professional course in comics making, for sure, just in all regards, writing, drawing, uh, writing art, the whole thing. Uh, if you get a chance, pick up all the Nexus books you can as quickly as you can, because that one is great. Do I think it belongs in the dollar bin? Yeah, maybe this reprint does. Uh, but, you know, First Comics uh, published this in 89. It was probably, again, one of the last things they published because they were teetering toward disaster and not paying artists and things like that, as I understood it. Um, so uh, I still recommend getting it. It's great storytelling, and you won't go wrong. Uh, so anyway, that's the three reads for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. If you're watching on video, thank you very much. Um, and uh, do recommend this uh, watch to somebody if you enjoyed it that much, and they like old comics, and on and on and on. Of course, you can pick up the podcast from iTunes, Sprecher, Spreaker, Sprecher, Sproker, Sprecher, <laughs> speaker probably uh tune in uh blueberry and of course google play music as well as a couple of other places so do check that with spotify it's on spotify as well uh you can subscribe to any of those places you can subscribe at the uh, web address that's at the bottom of the screen here which is dollarboxreads at dot libsyn.com uh the web the podcast is always available on my facebook page each week uh, as is the video portion of the podcast uh, where you can get that and i try to do that with each of the reads i didn't last week i got a little lazy but i'll try to make sure we do the video portion of the reads each week all right well we'll come back and we'll have our interview on the podcast stick around <laughs>